Hello, I'm Professor Barba, here with a new short demo of Jupyter and Python. And this time, we're going to show you iterations with four statements. Here I have Jupyter open. Uh, I'm seeing the Jupyter dashboard. I'm going to open a new Jupyter notebook. Here it is. You can follow along this demo by going to the try.jupyter.org website, where you can start a Jupyter session and open a new notebook in the same way, clicking the new button and choosing Python 3. But I am going to just use my local installation to avoid internet problems. So what is the idea of iterations? In plain English, iterations means to repeat a process many times. And a Python 4 statement iterates over the items of a sequence. Um, say you have a list, a list called fruits that contains a sequence of names, of fruits, a sequence of strings, and you want to do something with each one of those uh, strings. You would write a statement with a four keyword. So let's, let's try it out. Let's define fruits equals, and I'm going to choose some names of fruits, apple, um, banana, say, I'm going to add a couple more, orange, and let's say cherry and mandarin. Here is my list of fruits. Uh, let's find out the length of this list using the len function. Five, it has five elements. So if I wanted to do something with each one of the elements in this list, I would write a statement that starts with the for keyword, then I could write a variable name fruit that doesn't exist yet and use the keyword in and the name of the list fruits. So notice here, for fruit in fruits. It reads pretty much like English, which is very cool. I use the colon to end this uh, statement and notice the next thing. A Python has this important feature, which is that the next statement in a for a block is indented from the left. You can indent in many ways. You can use two spaces or four spaces or a tab. That's a matter of style, but you must be consistent. I'm going to use four uh, spaces and I'm going to write the next statement that needs to be repeated for every element in the list. I'm going to say print eat your root. And let's see what happens. I executed that cell and I see the output that it says eat your, eat your apple, eat your banana, and so on with every element of the list. So pay attention, what happened here? First, the for statement ends with a colon. Don't forget that, it's a typical uh, bug that you could have. Uh, the variable fruit appears here and I implicitly defined it in the for statement. It wasn't used before in my little notebook and uh, it wasn't defined before. It's implicitly defined here. The, this variable fruit takes the value, the string value, of each element in the list of fruits, first apple, then banana, and so on, sequentially in order. Then the print statement gets executed with each value that this variable takes, and once Python runs out of fruits, it stops. It doesn't even need to know what the length of the list is. It just stops when it runs out. Okay, so here's another useful function that we have that we can use with for statement, which is the enumerate function. I could, it adds a counter automatically that I can use as an index inside the iteration. So I could write for, say i, comma, I'm going to define another list here. Name equals, let's see, um, Sam, Zoe, Natty, and Gil. These are four names that I've defined into a new list, and I'm going to do for i, comma, name in enumerate now, names, colon, and I'm going to do, pay attention, I'm going to do something pretty cool here, which is I'm going to access the element i of the list names, and I'm going to change it by applying the capitalize method 
for a string. Uh, let's see what that does. I'm going to print names. Oops, what did I do? I forgot the S here. Let's just do it again and see. Now it did work. So names was the name of my list that I had in mind. And here I'm using names again. So that's the name of the list. And notice what we have here. I becomes the counter. So the function enumerate actually creates an automatic counter. And name is implicitly defined in the for statement in that line. And for each value of name, I apply the capitalized method and the value of name is associated with the position index in the list of names. And so I can change that item by capitalizing and out comes a new list where each of the names, the original names, is capitalized. That is some neat trick for an uh, iteration with Python.